Hello everyone, you're listening to Scientific Healing with Dr. Anastasia Chopolis. I know the power of vibrational healing by combining physics and ancient healing arts to develop a system that has amplified results with thousands of my clients and healing students. When you are ready to be able to transform your life and the lives of others, go to scientifichealer.com forward slash energize me to discover more about my program for helping healers and coaches thrive and grow in their business. I invite you into a conversation at scientifichealer.com forward slash appointment to talk about you having more energy while growing your healing or coaching practice. And today's topic is not just about stretching yourself to grow, but instead having the audacity to put a stake in the ground with a great big bold goal and go for it. You all have that capability. You may have even wanted to do that, but you're just not seeing how to get where you are now to that big goal. So now you're paralyzed with uncertainty and fear. Is this you? Then listen further. I'm so pleased to introduce my next guest, Melanie Benson, the founder of Own Your Bold Challenge. She is going to share how to own your bold so you can accomplish your crazy ideas with more power and confidence and accelerate your results. Melanie is the perfect person for this topic. She is an optimizer, and what I mean by that, she is a gift for guiding mission-driven entrepreneurs to thrive as they emerge as leaders in their business and industry, basically fast-tracking them to success. And she's the perfect one to do it because with over 15 years mentoring high-achieving game changers, Melanie is a revenue strategist removing productivity and progress hindrances while identifying high payoff profit-boosting opportunities that position the entrepreneur, and that's you healers and coaches, to achieve their dream business. But Melanie is more than just her business. She's a lifestyle enthusiast and spends her free time in search of the best spas and beaches in the world. Welcome to the show, Melanie. I'm so delighted to have you here today. Uh, I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for having me. It's uh, We've been kind of bumping into each other for so long. It's uh, nice to take this to a whole new level. It sure is. I was very much looking forward to this conversation. Me too. So I, I have to ask this, is setting bold goals something you had to do to get your business to thrive the way it does? Mm. Well, you know, I think we all have to. And for me personally, you know, when I started my business way back uh, 18 years ago, I just knew that what I was doing wasn't working. And I was very much in my, I'm only going to do what feels comfortable. I'm only going to do, you know, what I feel is, uh, we'll just say aligned. And I realized that I was not doing the things I needed to do. And looking back on it, I don't think I realized so much I was setting a bold goal. I just realized I needed to do what I had been unwilling to do if I wanted results I had not achieved before. And so I, for me at the time, set a really crazy big goal, and it was I was going to break six figures in a year. And no woman in the entire lineage of my family, not to mention the men, like we're, let's just talk about the women for a minute, had ever made more than $10 an hour. So wow. to set that kind of goal for myself felt really brazen, like it felt so bigger than me. And the, it was a bold goal. It was so much bigger than anything I knew how to do or anybody could tell me how to do that I knew well. It catalyzed, it like, it kind of like, it made me more resourceful and it, it kind of activated something I couldn't get to otherwise. It had to be too big. You know, it had to be so much bigger than anything I'd done before. And I think that's what, I don't know that it helped me thrive. What it did is it helped me achieve something I had no idea how to achieve. Yes, and I, I think that that's the key and it's to take the how out of it and just say this is what I want to accomplish and then align everything that you're doing towards that goal. Well, that's exactly what a bold goal is about. Mm -hmm. And I like to give my clients bold goals when they're stuck, when they have a vision that's way bigger than them and they don't know how to achieve it. Like you just said, we've got to get the how out of the way. Or they want to they wanna like scale their impact and the way they're doing it isn't working. Like they're trying to just do more of what they did that got them where they are now. And that's yes. not how you get those bigger, bolder levels of success. 
No, exactly. And so you talk about it creating momentum and removing your perceived auto obstacles. How does it do that? Well, I think a bold goal does two things. One, it shifts the way you make decisions. So when you set a bold goal, you're, you're basically doing something that's probably terrifying you. That's the way I look at a bold goal. And so the idea of creating six figures terrified me. And I've, I've set many bold goals over the year. One time I wanted to speak in Australia and I, I wanted to be an international speaker. And so I'd never spoken overseas before. And I was a little terrified by it because I'm a bit of an introvert by nature. And, you know, I like to do things I'm good at. So when I do something I'm not good at and I've never done before, it scares me. And so setting a bold goal means it's stretching you beyond your comfort zone. And that means you have to do things you've never done before to get somewhere you've never been. And so on one level, it's stretching you. It's causing you to be more resourceful. To It changes the way your brain works. So if it's something you know how to do or it's just a little bit bigger than what you know how to do, it's so easy to fall back into our old patterns. But if we want to achieve something we've never done before, then we have to push ourselves out of that comfort zone and use new you know, new thinking, new strategies, new actions. It's like you literally have to catapult. And you know, so the I, second, yeah, you want to add something? Yeah, I just wanted to say, you know, I was smiling when you said I'm an introvert. Well, I'm a severe introvert too. <laughs> and I think that a lot of us who work on our businesses are really introverted. And, um, you know, I don't think extroverted people have... I, I mean, I'm just guessing from the way all the extroverted people that are around me are, is that, um, you know, I'm, I'm not sure. I think that we're the thinkers more than the doers. We think a lot. Yeah, it's an interesting observation. My observation is more introverted people tend to, yes, go into their mind to solve problems and mm -hmm. more extroverted people tend, and I say tend because it's not a hard fast rule, but no, it tend is. to be more action oriented, like you're saying, and they tend to kind of talk and, and act, but they have a different challenge. They do. They tend to overdo things, overperform, they do too much, and they tend to spin a lot and they get themselves overwhelmed because they have too many ideas and too many things on their plate. Yes. And, uh, you know, it's kind of like we call it also shiny object syndrome, like yeah. going after this and that. Oh, that looks like a good idea. Oh, I think I'm going to do that now. Yes. <laughs> so, I know a few of those people. <laughs> yes. And I, I, you know, I'm guilty of that too. <laughs> so who seeks you out and how do you help them? Yeah, I think the people that seek me out tend to be, um, the, I, I like to call them the emerging authorities, the emerging experts. These are people who they have this gift, they have a, an expertise, and they want to not be a best kept secret anymore. They want to grow the impact they can have, but they know what they're doing isn't working. So they're coaches, they're consultants, they're authors, speakers, you know, basically anybody who's got content or ideas and they want to scale them. Um, my, my little distinction is you already have a business, it's just not working right. Either you can't get more sales or you're feeling exhausted, you kind of hit the wall, you can't, you can't grow your income because there's no more of you. So mm -hmm. that, those tend to be the people that seek me out. And the reason why they come to me for the bold goals is oftentimes they've had this idea that's pulling at them. And that little voice in their head says, oh, you can't do that. Who are you to th think you could pull that off? Oh, you don't know how to do it. So it just gets stuck. And instead of letting that energy uh, dissolve or even like fester like a wound that's not getting <laughs> treated, you want to give energy to that idea and you want to be able to, you know, shepherd it so that it either closes because it's not your idea or it grows legs and it fly, and, and, or wings, we might say, and it, and it can fly and take off and become that next big thing that you do. Yeah, and I, I, I mean, I, I don't identify with that in what you just said anymore in terms of who am I, 
but because I used to say that all, I used to think that all the time. Um, e even when I was a scientist and working on a particular science problem. So I'd publish a paper and I go here now everybody else can take this information and build it into their models. And then I saw no one did it. <laughs> so then I say, okay, it's my turn to do that. So then I'd take the information and build it into models and create a new model out of it. Right. And so then it got to the point where it's not who am I to do this is, is, you know, I better do it because nobody else is doing it. <laughs> right. <laughs> Which can be in itself a great reason to pursue a bold goal. Right. Exactly. And then and then the other is who am I to do it? Well, I'm the one that knows how to, you know, that that has this information and no one else does because we're all unique in our experiences and we all have something to offer. We so, do. Yeah. So what's a typical result? So someone comes to you and they're saying, oh, look, I, you know, I've, I've maxed out my time. At uh, the end of the day, I'm really tired. This can be me, uh, you know, like basically Tuesday through Thursday. I'm working from like 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. with calls like all through the, the day. And I'm going, I, I don't think I can add more, more time to my week because I've got other things to do on the other days. So, so when someone's like that and they come to you, what do they walk away with? How do you help them? Well, and, and let's just be clear. Like if someone was in that situation where it's like, I'm totally maxed out. I don't have any more space. You only come to me if you want something more. Like I'm not making the money I want or I'm not having the impact I want. And you feel this craving and this deep dip drive to, to do and be more. Cause, and then there's that gap, like, how do I take it to the next level? And so I'm thinking of this woman who joined my program earlier this year, and her name is Linda, and she's this amazing woman. I've actually known her for almost 20 years, and it just felt like the right time for her finally to work together. And so um, Linda is a heart-based, very spiritual. She does this really powerful work with chakras, and she works specifically in a, in a very unique niche. And she just was tired of working all the time. And so she, she has this funny little saying, she's like, I'm tired of being a volunteer in my own business. Okay. <laughs> That's a really good statement because I'm it was sure a lot so of people good. identify that with that. <laughs> so good, right? Like how many times have we caught ourselves there? I was like, yeah, right. And one of the things that happened was, is her vision was so big and then she was stuck in this in the place she was now, and so she couldn't see the path between where she was and this big vision. And so she would take these big leaps and then fall and not get them where she wanted. And she was running out of energy and running out of time. And so we just reorganized everything, mm -hmm. and we we kind of had to chunk it down. I call it like, yes, it's a big vision, but we got to take a small chunk and move that chunk forward so it can lead to the next thing and the next thing. And I think that's what happens sometimes is people have such a big vision that they don't, can't see what to do between where they are and where it is. And so one of the first chunks was to get the business she had performing so at such a high level financially that it would fund the bigger vision, which is a philanthropic vision. Mm -hmm. And so then it would take the pressure off financially to make the philanthropy side get money in the door. And so she just wrote me a couple of days ago and said that the first leg of what we put into action, she hit out, performed her, revenue goals by 175%. Wow. And that's because she was focused. She knew exactly what to do. And we literally created a little roadmap for her. Do this, do this, do this, do this. And I think that's what's missing for a lot of people is what do I do? And then having the courage to take the steps you can see and not have to see the rest of the pathway until you've gotten through that first step, you know, that, that will then create some more momentum and some more energy and some, uh, you know, it's like the snowball, it gains more traction and more, it gets bigger and, and more speed as it goes down the mountain. Yeah, it's kind of like, how do you eat an elephant? <laughs> One bite at a time. <laughs> right. One toenail at a time. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but that's true. I feel like I'm an, I've an, I'm an elephant eating uh champion like <laughs> how do we help you eat the elephant you know it's like right. and you've got to be able to see what all the parts of the elephant are to to know which chunk you want to start with well yes exactly and you know i have a big a big audacious goal too is bridging the gap between conventional and energy medicine mm -hmm. and you know i can see like little things in between like where do we have to go and how i can build clout and how i can 
you know, bring more people, more people into the fold of helping them heal, but getting to that big goal, I'm still a little fuzzy, but I'm not worried. <laughs> you know, it's one of those things, I don't know how to do it yet, but I'm working on it. <laughs> well, and that's where you just have to become the person who's resourceful yeah. enough, confident enough, and courageous enough to take the action that's in front of you to move it forward. And mm-hmm. sometimes that's all I'm doing with my clients is, okay, how do you become the person who can take this big leap and not have to see the path. Yeah, that's the thing is, is getting over the fear of not knowing what your next step or your, you know, two steps down the road is going to be. Just get the next step done and don't worry about what's coming. It's exactly. Kind of, it's kind of like not having a, a, a total life plan. So, you know, when I got married and when I was going through a divorce with two kids, right? I didn't know what my next day was even going to look like because I had already planned this other path out. And now I, you know, it's like I did a dog leg over to the right and I'm going, hmm, I don't know what's over there, (laughs) but I I better go because where I was wasn't a good place. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And sometimes that's, that's the, that's the wiser part of us is to know what is aligned and what's taking you where you need to go. And then what's completely not the right direction and be able to to pivot and go in the, you know, go in a better, more aligned direction quickly. Okay. So, so can you name like like a specific case of somebody who came to you that was completely overwhelmed? You don't have to name their name, but, and then what was the end result? Well, the client I just was talking about is one of them. Um, I've got another lady who took the own your bold challenge earlier this year and then started working with me and, um, super talented. Uh, she, she's in the online marketing space and she had so many ideas and so many different things she wanted and she couldn't quite figure out how to move from the one-to-one model to mm-hmm. a more scalable revenue model. Mm-hmm. And he just was spinning all the time because she couldn't quite figure out what direction. And I think, you know, in these, in these situations, and I've probably worked with thousands of people in that situation, What happens is just having someone organize what you have in a flow and take away the distractions. It's like, okay, this is your your high profit generating opportunities. These are kind of distractions. Just focus on your high profit one, giving her permission and kind of helping her see which was what. She restructured her offerings and she just wrote me yesterday that, she was in this place now where she had, uh, she had sold her first multi four figure deal where she was before like stuck at like $80 an hour. And this is the, the, like taking away the confusion of don't focus on that. That's not your high payoff opportunity. Focus on this one thing and make that really great. That's the optimizing. She was just on fire. It's like now she's just growing hand over fist and, I think sometimes it's just the simplicity. Simplify to multiply. Stop trying to do everything. Mm-hmm. Do a few things really well. And that gives you power. That gives you momentum. And it also allows you to use your strengths better. Mm-hmm. I, I love that story a lot because I think that that identifies, uh, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs and, you know, whether you're a healer or a coach, you are an entrepreneur, right? So a lot of entrepreneurs um, will try to figure out all these different opportunities. Oh, that'll make money or that'll make money and that'll make money. Oh, you can do click ads or you can do, um, you know, all of these different little things that only bring pennies on the dollar really. And, you know, having somebody like you come in and go, Oh, look, that's, that's just a waste of time that, you know, you can't get, (laughs) you can't get to where you want with these little things, but if you focus on this big pay payout, um, you know, things will run a lot more smoothly. And, you know, advertising is advertising. If you advertise this or that, it doesn't matter. You're still attracting people and it's better to advertise for the, for the big, for the big goal kind of thing, your bold goal, rather than your, um, the, the little pennies. It's just, it's just your time is better spent. So I really love that that example because so many of us can fall into the trap i call it putting the um the conditioner on the hair so now you can comb through it and get rid of all the tangles (laughs) that's a great metaphor (laughs) right just get rid of all the tangles 
Bye bye tangles. Now we're just going to go smoothly. Yeah, I feel like there's a great commercial there somewhere. <laughs> bye bye tangles. <laughs> we were talking about creating momentum before. So, how do you know that your bold goal or the listeners' bold goals are just big enough? Well, I would take the word just out and big enough. Let's just mm-hmm. focus on how do we know it's bold enough, right? Yes, exactly. It scares you. Mm-hmm. You don't know how to do it, mm-hmm. but yet there's something inside of you that will not let this idea quit you. Like you can't shake it. And it's, it lights you up and it excites you. Even though it terrifies you, it excites you. And it's almost like there's this deep knowing that you've got to do it. Mm-hmm. And when your bold goal is bold enough, it's actually going to be like, it's going to feel like it's so big, you have no idea how to pull it off. But it doesn't mean it has to be like you're starting an entirely new country, right? Like it's not <laughs> something that's it's unattainable. It's just something really big. And, it's, and for some people, it could be, I want to break six figures. It could be, I want to have a five-figure month, right? It's something you've not done before and you don't know how to do it and it scares you. And it might scare you because you, know, you don't know how to do it. It might scare you because it's like there's that tingling, you know, that line between excitement and fear is so small. And sometimes we get confused and we think it's, it's fear, but actually what it is is like it's this, your body's getting turning on and getting, you know, alive and full Mm -hmm. of, you know, your Mm -hmm. soul is waking up because you can't wait to, to do this thing. And one of the things that I think is really powerful in this process is the power of the decision. When I teach the own your bold challenge, one of the things I always tell people is if you have not achieved your biggest goals, it's because you actually haven't made a decision yet. You might be interested. You might be curious you might be, you know, like wanting to do it, but you haven't decided to do it. And I think starting your own business or, t- or deciding you want to take your business to a new level are two of the boldest goals anybody can ever set for themselves. Yeah, I like that decision. I, I always tell people, make a decision. And when they're waffling about something, I don't make the decision for them. I say, which do you choose? <laughs> Usually I put it very starkly. Do you want to live? Or do you, do you not want to live? And usually it's like, what if, like I'll pose a question, what if you could have the life that you desired without all of this struggle that you've got going? And would you want to go forward? And, you know, of course, most of the time the question, the answer is yes, and then we make it so, right? But making that decision is super duper really important is making the decision and then committing to the decision. I think that's the two parts. Yeah. And, you know, you were asking earlier about examples. I I have a woman in one of my programs right now, and she had this huge aha on our last big call. And she said, oh, my gosh, I'm struggling because I haven't made the decision. Mm -hmm. I haven't decided that I'm going to do this thing that we've been talking about with her business. She's like, I've been thinking about it, and I've been thinking that I've decided, but I just realized I haven't really decided. And you know that you've decided because you can't imagine anything else anymore. Like you're all in. Mm -hmm. And there's this distinction that I learned uh, a few years back that, that helps here. And it's like, when you're committed, you do what it takes. Like, okay, so I don't know what to do next, but I'm going to keep moving and keep moving. It's okay if I make mistakes. It's okay if it doesn't work perfectly, but I can't not do this thing. Mm -hmm. When you're interested, you only do what you're comfortable with and you only do just enough to, you know, not fail, but not enough to actually succeed. And so that's when you know you've really made a decision is you are all in. Yeah, I love that. I love that um, distinction between interest and commitment. So what's what's a common mistake that coaches and healers make that puts the brakes on their success and constricts their cash flow? Mm. Um, You know, I think one of the biggest one, and it really ties into what we were talking about earlier with, with knowing how, I think people don't understand that fear often disguises itself as our logic mind. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to making a decision to go for your dream or to, to pursue something you're excited about, 
your logic mind kicks in and takes over and says, that won't work. You don't know how, why would you take that risk? You can't afford it, right? Like he comes up with all these rational reasons why something won't work. And what I know now, um, having, you know, done a lot of really interesting things with my business and my clients over the years is is it, you know, a bold goal is never achieved through logic. Bold goals defy logic. So that means you are actually defying your fears. And so we have to learn to recognize when our logic mind is taking over and and giving you very logical, practical reasons why not to do something, but it's not actually true. It's just that's the safety version of you taking over. It's one of the three, I call them sneaky success barriers. It's one of the three most common ones that comes up and, you know, really kind of like takes over your brain and makes you think that you're doing the right thing, but it's actually holding you back. (laughs) <laughs> yes, exactly. And, um, you know, it's a, it, there's a lot of things. I've spent a lot of money on coaching and I've gone to lots and lots and lots of classes and people say, well, how could you have spent that much? And I said, well, I'm worth the investment. <laughs> I love that. It is an investment. We're always investing in our growth and our, in, in expanding our mind, even if all we do is meet one person who opens our thinking to a new way of seeing something or gives us one new idea, it's worth it. Exactly right. Exactly right. In fact, it was one of the early programs where I met a lady who told me about um, how she regenerated her thyroid. And I thought, what? You can regenerate thyroid? I thought healing was just, you know, emotional and all that. No, she did physical healing. And I took what she, I learned from her and I took it to a new level. So it's basically due to that my taking that step into that one coaching program, meeting this particular person. And now I have this giant business (laughs) moving forward (laughs) just from that. So even if in the coach and I, the coach that I, you know, he and I did not resonate at all, but that's okay because I, I met a lot of amazing people. So, you know, I think if you look at your investment in that and where would you rather invest in the stock market or you, (laughs) I'd rather invest in me. And I'd exactly. actually rather invest in the potential. The potential, exactly. It is exactly unlimited. Right. It is. It really is unlimited. And there are no there are no boundaries. There are people that go to a regular job and um you know, in terms of the number of hours, I work a fraction of the number of hours and can earn three to four times the amount with the same level of education. That's impressive. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, um, so what's the biggest lesson you learned that to do over again, you would pass on to someone just starting out? I have learned so many lessons. Picking one is always a little bit challenging for me, but you know, um, I think one of the biggest lessons that was actually the hardest one for me to learn is that um, I don't know it all and that comfort is not necessarily the goal. Now I distinguish being comfortable and being in flow differently. Like I, I was very committed to being comfortable. Like I didn't want to get hurt. I didn't want to make a mistake. I didn't want to do something wrong. I didn't want to, you know, upset anybody. I didn't want to shake any apple carts, right? Like, so, you know, my, my wound is I've got to get it right. And I, I don't want to uh, risk letting anyone down. That's my big life wound. And so, Facing that as a business owner and recognizing that I actually need to focus on being in flow, not being comfortable, changed Mm -hmm. everything for me. Because when you're in flow, you're actually coming from what I call your zone of genius. You're coming from your greatest strength. And you're doing things that use your greatest strengths instead of trying to like contort yourself and become something that you don't know how to be and you're trying to be someone else. You know, there's a lot of advice out there to model other people's behavior and like, just do what I do. And you know what, that doesn't work for everybody. But if you know who you are, you know what your strengths are, and then you commit to becoming the person that can pull it off, then you find your flow state. And when you do your flow state, everything feels effortless. And that was my biggest learning was to realize the difference between being comfortable and being in flow state. And And it changed me. 
I, uh, that's a really awesome distinction. I love that. And, and how, what can listeners do right now to tap into the magic of their bold goals? Well, you know, you were saying something earlier, and I wanted to circle back on it. There is something that each and every one of us can do immediately to tap into the magic of our bold goals, and that is to make one. Like, first of all, you have to make a bold goal. Mm -hmm. And even if it's like just becoming a different version of you, like stretching into something new, doing something that you've never done before, that energy will continue to keep you growing and expanding. And it will take you somewhere you don't know you want to go, but it will take you somewhere that you will love. And so um, tap into the magic of your bold goal by simply deciding. Okay. Now uh, I do the own your bold challenge once a year, which, you know, stay on the lookout for it. If you, if you follow me on my, any of my social media, I will let you know when it's coming, but it's one of the most powerful ways to activate a bold goal. But mm -hmm. I, and then I got to say one more. And secondly is decide. Mm -hmm. Use the power of a decision to catapult you and really notice like am i all in or not can i give an example real fast do we have time for an example on that? oh we do please yeah. so you know um i can't turn my coaching energy off and it just you know sometimes leaks over to my family <laughs> 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 one time my brother wanted to come out for um uh, it was one of the holidays and it's expensive to fly from back east out here and you know fly all three of them and so he really wanted to come and i and i said well have you decided and he said, yeah, like, I'll be there. And I said, did you book the ticket? He's like, no. I said, did you tell anybody what date you're arriving? He's like, no. And I said, and you haven't decided. And in his mind, he thought he had decided, right? Like he, he was like mostly going to come. And this is what people do all the time with any goal. They mostly think they will. Or if, it's, if the money shows up, I will. Or if I have time, I will. That's not a decision. So here's what I did with them. And I said, go book the ticket and tell everyone you're coming. And he's like, but I don't have the money yet. I said, I don't care. Book the ticket. He said, I guarantee you when you book that ticket, you will, the money will show up. Sure enough, he had been trying to sell a truck for, two, for like something like two months. He had not one call on it. Within 48 hours of booking his ticket, someone called him and offered him the money he was asking for the truck. That's an and awesome a story. I love that. <laughs> that is the power of a decision. And I see it happen all the time. And it, and it shows up in different ways. And I think the other thing is we have to be open to all of the ways we can get to our goal, not the way we are attached to achieving our goal. Yeah, that's why I tell people, like people are always saying, you know, in their affirmations, they earn so much money. I said, why do you have to earn it? Why don't you just say such and such an amount flows into your bank account without putting uh, an attachment to it? And they go, oh, wow, that feels way better. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, exactly. weird things show up. Like I had a, a, a health insurance refund show up and then a car insurance refund show up. And I go, where did this money come from? I have no idea idea. I don't care. It's earned money. Boom. In the count. <laughs> exactly. You know, it's like, I, I like to play games with my bold goals. It's like, I like to challenge myself to achieve things in new ways. Like my current little adventure I'm on right now is like, how do I achieve more with more ease and grace? Like feeling so effortless. Mm -hmm. And I, and so like, what if we challenged all of our assumptions we, we like dissolved all of the paradigms and the constructs that we've been holding and we decide what we want it to look like. We decide what we want it to feel like. And we did it. Like imagine what we would do differently now. Mm -hmm. Then go do that. Make that your bold goal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that. So you have, you have a, a um, really great gift. I, I took the quiz. Oh, you did. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. So it's a quiz to discover where your hindrance is to making, you know, to, to taking yourself to the next level. I, I had a mix of everything. <laughs> oh, isn't that interesting? Some people do, by the way. It, and it's, <laughs> it is often that you'll find that you're a combination of, they're the sneaky success barriers I mentioned earlier. Right, the sneaky success barriers. So for people to get to that, you go to rewiredforwealth.com. And you can take this little quiz and it'll tell you exactly what your sneaky barriers are to your success. Yeah. So how can people get a hold of you? 
Yeah, MelanieBenson.com is a great way. I'm on all the main social media sites, but I really just do, you know, the best way is coming through the quiz. Uh, you'll get an invitation to come to my Amplifier Success community, which is free right now, which is my gift to you. And um, oh, also, when you do take the quiz, uh, I have a little gift for you to help you decipher your quiz results. It's my book, Rewired for Wealth. So that just watch for that once you once you go through the quiz, you'll be guided to where you can download it as my gift to you. Awesome. So this will help people um, set their bold goals and get moving on this train to to becoming what they really want to do. Like there's the goal that they're afraid to tell anybody. <laughs> yeah, that boldest goal that won't let you sleep at night, that keeps uh, following you around and stalking you until you say yes to it. Yes, that that does happen. It gets, I always say, first it's a little tap on the forehead, and then it's a knock, and then pretty soon it's a two by four, and then later a sledgehammer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've had a couple of those along the way. It's gotten me to say yes to my bold goals faster. Yeah, well, for me, I got really, really, really sick. And so I said, well, I guess this life is not <laughs> I'm not meant to be in this life. I have to have a no new one. So I trans transformed everything in it, like totally everything. And that's how it happens sometimes. <laughs> if you don't listen at first, <laughs> you will end up having to listen. <laughs> you know, and I'm glad you said that because... I, I, I want to inspire people to listen to the, those bold goals earlier um, and, mm -hmm. and to, to really like commit to doing it with ease and grace. Like we don't have to get sick in order to be fulfilled. No, we don't have to. And nor do we have to torture ourselves into it. Like, you know, listening to what everybody else is saying. Mm -hmm. like there, there are a thousand different marketers happy to market you anything, but if it doesn't feel an alignment and it's a struggle to do it, then stop it. Like some of the things like social media, I, I am not a social media person. I just don't understand all this sharing stuff. So I have, I have hired somebody to do it for me. Well, and that is, again, going back to this ease and grace. Like if it's mm -hmm. not your thing, then mm -hmm. get someone whose thing it is. Mm -hmm. and, and what sometimes I think happens is people um, don't do it and they say it's not aligned for me and then they avoid it. But if it's part of the path to get you where you want, to go and it's not your thing then decide you'll hire someone amazing and even if you can't afford it the power of bold goals will help you find the resources to make it all work well so not only not, to, i i had that situation and within the first couple of months i ended up getting somebody that paid for the whole year of social media there like, you go really super easy right through the social media so I, I know how well that works, like that, that truck story, that's exactly what happened. Within two months of hiring this person and getting my social media in order, boom, I had a, a client that I sold a $6,000 package in 20 minutes. That's a great example. And that's probably one of my early bold goals was I needed help to grow. And I didn't know how to hire anybody. I didn't have the money for them, but I made the decision I was going to hire someone. And... I ended up having like a three times return on that investment. I was able to take on three more clients for what I got off my plate. So again, it just all goes back to the decision, decide, mm -hmm. decide, and then you figure it out as you go. Exactly. And I, I did find the right person. And all I did was open my mouth at a networking meeting and say, I'm looking for a really good social media person. And boom, she fell on my lap effortlessly. That's funny. That's kind of how it worked for me too. <laughs> <laughs> so we can do things with ease and grace and no struggle. That's right. So thank you so much, Melanie. Thanks I for really me. yeah, I really appreciate you coming and sharing all this beautiful wisdom with us. And I really loved all those examples that you gave because it's very illustrative of <laughs> of how to move forward, you know, making a decision and committing to it and moving forward and not being afraid. Or, or being afraid and doing it anyway. <laughs> yeah, and really understanding what fear is. Fear doesn't mean stop. 
Yeah, actually. Oh, it, sometimes it does, but not always. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, when I was in a 12-step group, we always said that fear, when you're afraid of something, that's the direction you have to go. <laughs> mm, yes. Isn't that interesting? And that's the bold goal. <laughs> exactly. So thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And thanks for listening in today. Okay. Thank you for listening to Scientific Healing and for our fascinating guest, Melanie Benson. Again, you can connect with her at MelanieBenson.com or try out her discovery process with intriguing questions at RewiredForHealth.com. Let's you and I connect. Go to ScientificHealer.com forward slash energize me to discover more about a new intimate in-depth program designed to help you thrive as a healer or coach while building out your practice. Enrollment is open right now. And when you're ready to learn more, go to scientifichealer.com forward slash appointment. If you like this program, hit the like button or give it a five star rating, share it with your friends and be sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for being here and I'll see you in the next program. This is Dr. Anastasia Choplis until next time.